Superconductors are materials that have the ability to conduct electricity with zero resistance. Superconductors can be elements, alloys, compounds, and even non-stoichiometric ceramic materials. These materials must be held at low temperatures in order to achieve superconducting properties, which can limit their application. Superconducting materials are of interest because they are an upcoming technology which is still being developed. The initial discoveries of these materials were rather random and accidental. However, within the last 10 years, scientists and engineers have been able to harness the capabilities of these materials and produce important innovations such as magnet trains, MRI machines, and superconducting wire. These advances are significant because they transform superconductors from a cool science discovery to a discovery that could generate revenue. This changed the world's perspective on superconductivity. Superconductors are particularly interesting because the limits of these materials have yet to be reached and the scientific theory behind the phenomenon is constantly under review. The conductivity of a material is dependent on how willing its component atoms are to release electrons. For good conductors, the number of free electrons is large. These electrons flow freely through the material and when an electric force is applied, they experience a drift velocity and begin to move through the conductor to transmit electricity. In order for current to flow, the free electrons must travel through the material with as little interference as possible. Resistance is the property of a material that resists the flow of a current. Resistance results as electrons are scattered by impurities, defects, and atomic vibrations of a material. Due to a phenomenon known as Cooper pairing, superconductors do not experience resistance and current will flow without interference perpetually. In order to get rid of resistance, superconductors are created at very low temperatures. Superconductors are materials with the ability to achieve a state of zero resistance and low temperatures. These materials can be categorized as either type 1 or type 2 superconductors. Type 1 superconductors are elements and simple alloys that allow superconductivity at temperatures close to absolute zero, and type 2 superconductors occur at higher temperatures. Type 1 superconductors can be explained using the BCS theory, which states that superconducting materials must undergo a phase transition, which occurs at a unique, critical temperature for each material. Superconductors achieve zero resistivity as electrons pair into Cooper pairs, which can behave differently than single electrons. Cooper pairs form when one electron attracts the positively charged atoms of the lattice, causing these atoms to congregate and create a local area of higher positive charge. This positive wake, left by the first electron, then attracts other nearby electrons and constitutes a pairing of these electrons. As multiple Cooper pairs are formed within the material, they merge into one quantum wave that fills the entire material. The energy to disrupt this wave and break any pair of electrons will then be related to the energy required to break all of the pairs in the wave and therefore the attributes of a material that typically cause resistance will not be strong enough to affect the current of the quantum wave as a whole. As a result, resistance has disappeared. Superconductors must be created and held at low temperatures to allow for Cooper pairing and to minimize resistive scattering of electrons. At low temperatures, the energy of the conductor's atoms will be reduced and thereby the amplitude of atomic vibrations will decrease as well. This decreases the chance of the electron being impeded by an atomic lattice. Low temperatures also reduce the number of defects, for example vacancies, in the material, so electrons would exper experience fewer obstacles as current flows. Finally, low temperatures allow Cooper pairs to form and remain intact. At high temperatures, the atomic vibration of the lattice prevents the deformation necessary to form Cooper pairs. A process that can be used on materials to form superconductors is called the powder and tube process, which is seen here. This process is used to form long-length conductors. In this video, the process begins with magnesium dibromide powder, which undergoes extensive heat treatment. The wire is then formed using rollers, which then elongate the wire so it can be cut to equal lengths. They are then packed together in a metal tube, elongated again, and finally undergo one more heat treatment, which enhances the superconducting properties. As described by researchers at the Cavendish Laboratory at Cambridge University, the structure of magnesium dibromide after it has been processed into superconductive wire can best be described as magnesium layers sandwiched in between hexagonal layers of boron. Researchers at institutions across the world are still working on fully understanding how processes such as the powder and tube process produce superconductive properties in these materials. Type 2 superconductor is characterized by the formation of mag magnetic vertices in an applied magnetic field. Type 2 superconductors cannot be explained by BCS theory. Type 2 superconductors have a much higher critical magnetic field. They usually exist in a mixed state or normal and superconducting regions. This is sometimes called a work state. 
Because vortices of superconducting currents surround filaments or cores of normal material, this allows magnetic field penetration. As their critical temperature is approached, the normal cores are more closely packed and eventually overlap as the superconduct superconducting state is lost. All high temperature superconductors are type 2 superconductors, which is where the biggest commercial and technological applications of superconductor lie in. One important application of high temperature superconducting wires is the transmission lines. The transmission over long distances creates power losses. The major part of the energy losses come from Joule effect in transformers and power lines. The energy is lost as heat in the conductors. It is possible to calculate what this means in dollar terms by looking at the difference between the amount of electricity generation and the amount actually sold at a retail level. According to data from the Energy Information Administration, transmission and distribution losses amounted to 239 million megawatt hours, or 6.1% of the net generation. When applying that number by the national average retail price of electricity, we can estimate those losses came at a cost to the U.S. economy of just under 19.5 billion. Superconducting wires can improve this process to a great extent. These advantages of superconducting wires include the cost of refrigeration of the wires to superconducting temperatures, the danger of the wires quenching, the inferior mechanical properties of some superconductors, and the cost of wire materials and construction. To make a superconducting cable, liquid nitrogen has to circulate through a closed loop that runs into the cable, back out, and then around again. Nitrogen is plentiful, cheap, and environmentally friendly, and despite all this, it will be too costly for commercial applications as the cooling with the liquid nitrogen has various drawbacks and high cost. Also, liquid nitrogen is sensitive to heat and easily evaporates when exposed to slightly higher temperatures. Superconducting materials at or near liquid nitrogen temperatures have the ability to conduct electricity with near zero resistance, so-called high temperature superconducting cables now under development, which still requires some refrigeration, can carry three to five times the power of conventional cables. The losses in HDMS cables are also significantly lower than the losses in conventional lines, even when the refrigeration costs are included. A major vendor of superconducting conductors claims that HDMS cables losses are only half a percent of the transmitted power compared to 5 to 8 percent for traditional power cables. Superconducting materials can also be used to replace the copper windings of transformers to reduce losses by as much as 70 percent of current designs. Current superconductors are seeing improvements every year as operating temperatures are increasing to room level temperatures and above. Small variations in materials and processing have revealed trends in superconductivity, such as the positive logarithmic relationship between the planar weight ratio, the difference in mass between planes of a structure, and the critical temperature.